Welcome to St. Edward's Episcopal Church on this second Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are here as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship continues with Holy Eucharist Rite 1. It's found on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer, and you may follow along on the screens above. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be you, Jesus. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good doth come, Grant that by thy inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, 
to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he, had, when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died. But come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she, for she said to herself, If 
I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put aside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. God is in the midst of all we do. 
and he will guide us to do that. Because of our faith, we know that God is on our side, just in case we need any help. All right, so I think that, that takes care of the epistle. I mean, the, the colleague. Let's look at the epistle. Well, it's a St. Paul's letter to Romans. It's about, oh my goodness, it's about Father Abraham. He's the father of faith. Boy, if there's anybody who was faithful to God, it was Abraham. And, and I remember he was willing to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And God provided him a ram at the last minute. And Abraham did not lose his faith. He trusted in God to provide an animal to sacrifice, right? And he did, right at the last moment. In a reading further in this lesson, it looks like Paul is pulling out all the stops to prove to the church of Rome how faithful this man was to God. And look, look what he wrote. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, but fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Let me look up the word reckon, because it's not really part of my vocabulary and, uh, and everything that I do. Now, in scripture, it means to take into account. Therefore, Abraham's faith was taken into account by God, and it was justified by God. No wonder he's called the father of faith. And I see there's one more thing Paul wrote that appears to be a reminder to us all of us, about who God is. Let me see here. It says, It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who is handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Good point. We believers cannot forget to take into account what God did for us through his son, Jesus how we are justified by the cross and by the resurrection of his son. And look, and it's the only way. I think Paul had to put this because he wrote that is to have faith is what we have to believe in, in, our, in Jesus. And our faith is justified through his, through his father. So as always, Paul's right. He doesn't miss a thing in his epistles. He covers it all. Ah, finally we have the Gospel of Matthew to review and to write about. Okay, Lord, I'm ready. This is an interesting chapter. In verse, how many stories in there? Man, man, it looks like Matthew squeezed in three different stories. The first one, Matthew wrote about himself, how he was called by Jesus to be one of his disciples, even though he was a tax collector. And there he goes. Jesus upsets the apple cart once again. He saw someone special that sparked his faith. It was Matthew, a tax collector of all people, to be one of his chosen twelve, an important role in his ministry. You know, and I, and I wonder if he knew that he would someday be one of our gospel writers for the New Testament. You know, come, Bob, he's God. Of course he knew. He knew who was going. And all he had to say was two words to Matthew. Follow me. And Matthew did just that. No hesitation. He had faith in Jesus to be his follower, to become one of his disciples. And look at it. Looked like Matthew lucked out. He got a dinner out of this right away. And at this dinner, the disciples who were there also got the brunt of the views by the Pharisees about why Jesus is mingling with the wrong crowd. You know, it's funny, you know, as I think about this, how many times we read in the gospel that Jewish leaders try to have a private conversation with the disciples in the same place where Jesus is. Like Jesus can't hear what they're saying. Again, he knows what's going on, but they don't give up. And we read that they did the same thing today. And Jesus' response reflects what his mission is for his ministry. And he says the following. For I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. 
Jesus is all about reaching out and saving and healing those who are classed as the outcasts of his day. And let me look at the rest of this gospel. For I remember in, this, this, in the gospel of Mark, I see Matthew is not as detailed as Mark. For in Mark, we learned that the leader of the synagogue was Jairus, and his daughter unfortunately died. He sought out Jesus, for he knew about Jesus and his miracles, and was convinced his daughter would live if Jesus just laid his hands on her. And he is desperate, not caring about what the people may think. And in front of a large crowd of people, he falls on his knees in front of Jesus and begs for help. Now who would not do the same for their child? We will all do that. But what makes this tragic scene unique is that Jairus was the leader of the synagogue. And he is seeking the help of Jesus who just before the Pharisees were criticized why he mingles with the wrong people. But he did not care. He had faith in Jesus to bring his daughter back to life. And wait a minute, there seems to be a, a right-hand turn here that Matthew takes on another story. It seems like Jesus and disciples are running towards Jairus' home, and they must have zigzagged in the crowd and came to a stop in front of a woman who was, who we have no information other than she was inheriting for over 12 years. And sees Jesus, and she pushes further in the crowd, and all she wants to do is this, touch his cloak. Her faith tells her that just by touching him, he will make her well. For she too, too heard about the miracles of Jesus. She had to be desperate, and she did what she had to do. She was able to reach out and touch the cloak of Jesus. And the amazing part is that even amongst the crowd that must have been touching up against Jesus, he felt that touch. He turned around and he saw who touched him. And he said to her, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. After 12 long years of hemorrhage and public rejection everywhere she went, she was restored to perfect health. It was the miracle of Jesus and, yeah, yeah, and also, yeah, Lord, the woman's faith, her faith that made it happen. So it looks like Michael Matthew is referring back to what is happening to Jairus' story. They all arrive at Jairus' home. And after Jesus took control, he shooed away all the people. He said, go away, go away, leave us alone. And he went inside the home to where the little girl was sleeping and took her hand. And there was that touch, the touching of his hand with her hand. And she was, and she got up and she was healed. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus tells the parents not to tell anyone what happened and to give the girl something to eat. Something Jesus does a lot. He doesn't want to spread the news. He doesn't want the people to know. And, you know, to this day, don't know more. In Matthew, the word spread like wildfire throughout the region. Another miracle by Jesus. But whatever the story in both, that about this miracle, the faith of Jairus and, his, and Jesus, that his daughter lived. And there's one more thing. As I think about what I just read and what Jesus did, the power of laying hands to bring about healing through the touch of Jesus and by through the power of the Holy Spirit. And come to think about it, that's exactly what we do here at St. Edward's as we follow the scriptures. Father Mark, in every service, will ask who wants healing prayers and the laying of hands. Every Wednesday, we dedicate a healing service for those seeking healing and laying of hands upon you and anointing with oil. In our drive through prayer that happens that last Saturday of every month, those who seek healing, we do the same. We, on the order of St. Luke, we do the same. We lay hands, we pray, and we anoint them with oil if they so want. Oh, you know, I think I did enough for this Friday afternoon. I I think it's time for my traditional snack of pretzels and TV, uh, pretzels and iced tea. 
and a little TV. I was, you know, the TV was in there. Can't say what the TV. And I have all day, well, not quite all day, because I have to go to consecration, but I have Saturday afternoon to finish my sermon. And I have Saturday night, and I have Sunday morning. But I have plenty of time to finish. And believe me, I take advantage of all those times. So for us here today, it's time to end our game of make-believe. You're no longer flying on a wall. You're back in your pews in St. Edward's. And I hope I gave you a little insight as to how we approach our sermons. And I was watching your faces, and you did a great as a fly on a wall. So give yourself a, a, that award. But knowing what you heard, and I prepared my sermon, was there a spiritual word or theme that was present in the three lessons of my sermon that really stood out? If you recognize the word, the five letter, faith, it was faith. And that brings one more question to life. Is there a difference between faith and trust? Because we heard a lot about faith, but also we heard some about trust. And I saw this article, it was written by Pablo Diaz of Guidepost. And he wrote the following after watching his mother experience the before and after heart surgery. And I think it's good. And I think it helps us to understand the difference between faith and trust. And I quote, It's one thing to believe in God, but another entirely to trust blindly in Him. And it's human nature to fear the unknown. The struggle with placing our trust entirely in God is something we must all face at one time or another. And it boils down to this. Faith is our belief system. Trust is our action. Faith is believing that God is who God says is and that God will, can do only what God can do. But trust takes the things to a one step further. It is making the willful choice to trust that God will do what he promised. It's sort of like the head is our faith and our heart is our trust. That ends quote. But you know it begins with our faith and the continuance of it never stops. We're constantly building our relationship with God through our faith. And that faith will fortify our trust with God, His Son, God, and, and God, the Holy Spirit. And when we do have this combination of the stronghold of faith and trust in God, that during our spiritual journey, we have the privilege to approach God with freedom and confidence and present our needs to put it into the hands of our God, as the old saying goes, to let go and to let God. And just as we know in our college today, as witness with Jairus, the woman, the Matthew, father of faith, good old Abraham, he, they all let go and they let God. And Karen and I have a plaque, I should say Karen and I and Francis, that we have a plaque that's right by our screen door. So we see it every day. It's a beautiful plaque with the background, the birds in the background. And it reads as follows, and I will leave you with this. It says, faith is not belief without proof, but trust is without reservation. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. You can follow along on our screens above or on page 328 of Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer in the divine majesty. Beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael the Presiding Bishop, Justin our Diocesan Bishop, Bishop Greg, Bishop Dorsey, Mark our priest, Father John, Father Bradley, Deacon Mickey, and Deacon Kim, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth a true and lively word, and rightly and duly minister thy holy sacraments. And we lift up at this day the parishes of the Church of Nativity of Port St. Lucie and Holy Faith Church in Port St. Lucie. And our supported missionaries in Thailand and Cameroon, and our ministries here locally, the Fellowship of Christian Act. And that all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially this congregation here present, and for our parish members, David and Karen Sire, that meet part and do reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We cease thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph our president and Ron our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right action for the welfare and peace of the world. Heavenly Father, let us remember those who give themselves to the service of others, doctors and nurses, teachers, and all who minister for those in need and provide the necessities of life, especially remembering those who are in the military and first responders associated with this parish family, TJ, Kyle, Scott, Ian, Elizabeth, Laura, Matt, Robert, Trevor, William, Colin, Steve, Nicholas, Zachary, Christian, Victor, Kent, Clay, Bradley, Greg, Ramey, and Mary. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people. Behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoice in thy whole creation. They may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech you thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those names on our parish list, remembering Susan, Judy, Ernie, Elizabeth, 
Josh, Mohammed, Abby, Ray, Terry, John, Chris and family, Lori, Joel, Rachel, Chris, and any names I can remember at this time. And all those in a transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity. And we give thanks for the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating their birthday this week, remembering Christy Ledecky, Floyd Cogley, Marjorie Benedict, Highland Highland, Anthony Gentry, and Marcy Woods. And for those celebrating their wedding anniversary, Dan and Krista Kane, Pratt and Gina Mountfield, and David and Karen Sire. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy service, the part of this life, thy faith and fear, remembering Gene Williams, Sean Aldridge, Frederick Parr Angel, Melvin Cooper, and Audrey Clark. Beseeching thee that grant them continual growth and love and service, and the grant us grace to follow the good example of the Virgin Mary, St. Edwards, and all thy saints, that with them may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, o Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for our new bishop, Justin, and his family, Lindsay, and the two girls. We pray, Lord, as he is seated in the cathedral this morning, that you would bless him and strengthen him. Give him wisdom in guiding our diocese. And Lord, we pray that you'll protect him from the enemy and keep him healthy. Be with Bishop Greg as he is no longer our diocesan bishop. Be with him and Laura Lee, Lord God, as they begin a new journey. We pray that you would bless our leadership of this diocese. And we thank you, Father, that we are able to worship and serve here in the Diocese of Central Florida. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Well, good morning again. It's good to see all of you on this Sunday. I'd like to give a special welcome also to the, uh, those that are joining us online, either live or later today or whenever you join. Welcome. Glad you are here. Peace be with you guys up there, too. <laughs> um, it is good to be with you today. You know, yesterday we, uh, we took a, a bus over to the Orlando area, went to this really big church that seats 4,500 people, and, uh, and uh, Bishop uh, Justin was consecrated. It was a good day. Um, there was a bunch, of, a bunch of folks there with pointy hats. We call them bishops normally. So. And uh, they consecrated uh, um, Justin and um, his wife Lindsay and his daughters uh, Zoe and Sophia were there. It was, it was a grand occasion. Um, just a personal note, I've uh, known our new bishop Justin since, we were, since I was in middle school um, in Sarasota. And his parents were there and I've seen them a couple times over the last week getting ready for this event. And it's so good to, to just to see what God does. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, blown away uh, by two, two punk kids from Sarasota. Um, one named Mark and one named Justin. And, and where he's led us, you know, here in Central Florida to lead and to serve. And uh, it's such a blessing. So anyway, excited about our new bishop and uh, all that God has in store for him as he leads our diocese. Um, the, uh, a few announcements for you. Uh, the baby bottles that we took on Mother's Day. Next Sunday is Father's Day, so bring those back by next Sunday, and uh, then we'll bring those over to Life's Choices um, as a gift offering for them and their ministry here in our area. The uh, Coming up on Sunday, July 2nd, so it's a few weeks away, uh, is our Freedom Cookout. Um, that'll be at 11.30 a.m., um, Hamburgers and hot dogs provided. Please bring a dish to share. It's a lot like our Pentecost. It's just without the fancy name. So um, but we'll call it the Freedom Cookout, and, uh, and that's coming up on July 2nd. The, uh, I do solicit your prayers this week, as I will be at Camp Wingman, as I annually do, um, and serving as a chaplain for middle school camp. And uh, so if you would pray for me and all of our campers that will be there, I think we'll have five middle school students at camp there from our church, and I think we have a total of about nine kids, nine or ten kids going to camp this year um, between middle school, high school, and elementary school camp. Um, so, uh, so I'll be down in Avon Park this week, and uh, so um, thank you for your prayers. I do invite you to come to coffee hour today and meet and greet one another, and as we uh, spend time together in fellowship. Are there any birthdays today or this week? If it's your birthday, please come forward. It's today. Oh, happy birthday. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Are there any wedding anniversaries today or this week? We have a wedding anniversary. How many years? 43 years. All right. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Happy anniversary. Are there any travelers today or this week? We have travelers. <coughs> travelers. Chloe's traveling to Maine for a little while. We'll see you after summer. 
in the fall? Cape Cod? Cape Cod? All right. You guys can carpool on those. <laughs> Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Safe travels. Enjoy your trip. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. continues with Holy Eucharist Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 333. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, 
who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel as you are able. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you would like to receive prayers of healing for yourself or for someone you know, with the laying on of hands, please come forward at this time.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.